Hello and welcome to our daily video devotion series called On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand as we are doing a verse-by-verse -verse walk through the book of 1 Peter and discovering those rock-solid promises that God makes to us and keeps to us in Christ and what they mean for our lives right now, right here, and what they mean for our life forever with Him. My name is Aaron Bublitz. I have the privilege of serving God's people at Heritage Lutheran Church in Gilbert, Arizona, and it's my privilege to be able to spend a few minutes in God's Word with you today. So we have reached chapter 4 of 1 Peter, and the, the section that we're getting into here uh, is in my NIV Bible entitled Living for God. And so we're going to take this in a, in a couple of days, this section here. Uh, today we're going to focus on verses 1 through 6. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans cho choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be, pre might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. So this is a pretty difficult section and a longer section. But let's, uh, let's try to just simplify it and, and make, it, uh, make it simple for you. And, and what, is, what is Peter being led by the Spirit to write here? So, so Christ suffered in his body. Right? He suffered for all sins. We saw that yet, uh, in our devotion last time, uh, that he suffered for all people, the righteous one for the unrighteous to bring us to God. And so we are to arm ourselves with the same attitude that we should expect to suffer in this life. Right? If Christ suffered, we will ex expect to suffer. And, and when we suffer, right, it's saying we're done with sin. We're not going to join in the evil in the world around us anymore. And we're going to suffer because of, because of that. Um, we don't live according to our evil human desires, right? We Rather, we desire to live for the will of God, for the one who saved us, the one who made us his own, the one who has given us heaven. We long to live according to his will with Christ living in us. And he says, you've spent enough time in the past living according to your sinful desires like the rest of the world, right? You, you've, d you've done that before, but that's not the way to live. That's not true living. That's not freedom. Instead, that's being enslaved to sin, to all of these things that he mentions, debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry. That's, that's slavery, slavery to sin. You've been set free, right? Um, and, and so he says that the world is, is going to be surprised, when you don't join them anymore, when you don't live like the rest of the world lives, um, they're going to heap abuse on you. And that's okay. Suffer for doing good. Suffer for being done, away, being done with sin. Suffer for the name of Christ, desiring to, to do the will of God rather than the will of your flesh. And it says that um, they, they're going to have to give an account to him who judges, right? Even though um, they may not believe God is still God over them too, and they're going to have to give an account for their evil. Uh, when, when Jesus comes back to judge the living and the dead, all will stand before him, both the wicked and the righteous, both believers and unbelievers, and they will have to answer for their sins, uh, for, for their wickedness. And he says, this is the reason the gospel was preached, so that they can be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Um, the gospel is preached to, to, to lead sinners away from their evil deeds. The gospel is preached so that they might do away with sin and live for God, that they might live according to God in regard to their spirit, to do away with the sinful flesh, right? That sinful flesh that was buried in the tomb with Jesus, but raised now we are raised to be something new, united to him in his righteousness, in his peace, uh, we have every blessing of God, right? That is what we long for others to have. That is why we go and live our Christian faith in this life. This is why we go and, and desire to tell everyone about their Savior, right? And, and that will result in some suffering. That will result in some uh, abuse heaped upon us. But that's for God to worry about. God will judge. Our responsibility is to go and to, to live with Christ living in us and let the world see Christ through us 
expecting that we're going to suffer, but to know it is not in vain. We desire to go and live the will of God so that we might give glory to him in our lives. Let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, we desire to live for you. We desire to live for you who sent Jesus, who came to live for us and die for us and was raised again so that we might belong to you. And we know that when we go and live for you, there will be suffering. There will be abuse heaped upon us. Uh, there will be surprise when we don't join in the evil of the world around us, but yet it's all for a purpose. It's to bring you glory. It's to let your light shine to the world so that your, your gospel might be known to all people. Forgive us for the times that we have failed when we have looked more like the world around us than like your children. Forgive us for the times that we have um, joined in the evil of the world rather than living according to your will and your word. And we know that you do forgive us and you fill us with, with forgiveness and you fill us with the power of Christ and the, uh, to go and to, to be something different, to show the world what they need. Uh, they need you. Uh, and uh, we desire that they would know you and know your grace and your love and your favor. Help us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, we'll continue through uh, this section here in chapter 4 together tomorrow. God's richest blessings out of your day today. Bye-bye.